Hello, today I'm going to be taking a look at the Vitrix Warriors of the Dark Age Viking set. So, this is an interesting set and I'll show you for why. First off, it comes in a bag, so this, at the top of the bag, are your assembly instructions. And that's a lot of numbers and letters to be looking at. And it kind of makes sense once you start going through it, but there are things that um, will drive you up the wall. So you've got things like arms, A7, A8, A16, blah, 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 blah. You can read all of that. Fit bodies B2 and B4. And you're going okay. But then you'll also see that A22 and A22A, which is two halves of a double-headed axe, also fit body B4. So there's a fair amount of, of work to do before you start gluing anything down just on working out what head fits what body and which sets of arms will fit these. And there are two sprues, sprue one and then the command sprue. So that was fun finding out. Speaking of the sprues, the set is 60 men and you get two command sprues and six of these additional warrior sprues. So you can make um, 48 men from the warrior sprues, which are a mix of armoured and unarmoured, and then you can make 12 a fully armoured sort of hearth guard type. So if we take a look, we'll start with the command sprue. As you can see, you have enough shields for all of them. There's a good amount of detail on them. And there's some neat features like this cowl can become a cloak, or you can leave the cloak off and just keep it like this. If we flip it around, you can see you've got your scabbards at the top. So there's actually eight scabbards here, and they are a variety of ornate and non-ornate. Let's put it like that. This particularly long spear can be used as a standard, and there are two cross pieces given with it also. Although standards, decals and the like are separate. You can probably see here we have the likes of CW5, CW6, CW7 and so on. This is how the sprue is actually lettered and numbered, for want of a better word. Now it is worth paying attention to where they are because I clipped off a body and thought I was dealing with B3, but it turned out I was dealing with something different because B3 was actually the piece above it. So it is worth paying attention to where those are and if it can actually belong to anything else, it may well belong to something else. So you can see we've got um, alternate heads, so bear, wolf head, the rest of the pelt. There are both DN axes, so 200 weapons, along with a variety of swords and single axes. There are on the command sprue two bodies and legs that are separate. They only pair up with the one that they are designated for. Now you could glue that onto this, but what you will find is there's things like a strap here that marry up to the strap on the legs. So if you put it onto this, then that strap goes nowhere. You may not notice it when you're actually building and painting these and playing with them, but if you look up close, it does have that. Again, terrific amount of details, plenty of heads. These two heads will only work with this body. Likewise, this pelt is specifically for this body and these head combos. We have our horn, shield arms, spear arms, spear at rest. So you can easily make 12 very unique models with this set. Um, and I've got some here that I've put together. So I'll throw those under camera. Now, it does say some of the arms will work better with bodies than others, and you should dry fit everything before you do it. I recommend that wholeheartedly. But as you can see, the cloak joins up fairly well. There's a slight um, separation at the top here. Now, when you paint that, you could probably hide that, 
or alternatively just trim it down or file it down to get rid of it entirely. The other side it's much crisper, it, it sort of disappears into the folds. So he's quite nice, has that sort of almost baggy pants that could almost get away with doing russ if you'd like that sort of thing. We also have this gentleman with the full face uh, chain mill on him. And again, you see what I say about that strap that comes around front and back and actually terminates down here. So if you're going to put a shield on the back, you could get away with it if he was on the other body. Speaking of other bodies, we have this. This acts actually, you do need to dry fit this first. I thought it was the wrong pair of arms because of the way I wanted to put it onto this body. I didn't think it would sit particularly well. And then I went back and double checked. So it will go on here, but it will only go on in this orientation. So if you want it further forward, and I had this arm pivoted more to the left as if he was striking over his head, then this arm will not sit flush at all. So dry fit everything when you're building. But as you can see, again, he's got a, a chainmail um, face mask on, and then the pelt comes around his shoulders and ties in beautifully with the back of the miniature. So it's almost seamless as to how that's gone together. Slight seam line on the sides, and in some places the uh, moulding is crisper than others. Have a look at another one of our oof there. So again, that bare head into the pelt is two separate pieces, but you can barely see the, the seam running along there. And once that's painted, it will practically vanish. Arm-wise, while these arms do fit on it, that's quite nice. I'm not a huge fan of this. It looks like it's a little bit unnatural. But I think if I started playing around with the sprue a bit more, I would have found a better fit for that arm. It is just a little bit time consuming to go through and go, this arm will work with this body, but it's not a good connection as this arm. It, there's a little bit of, um, a little bit more play to them than I would like to see if I'm looking to assemble things quickly. And especially with 60 men, you don't want to be spending a lot of time playing Scrabble trying to work out where the numbers and letters go. These are the last two from our command sprue. As you can see, I've got a, a spearman carrying. And again, this arm carrying the shield seems a little unnatural, possibly because I've gone for this lazy uh, guard arm, but then the shield seems to be raised. It just a little bit more time probably would have got that to sit a bit better. But I can't fault the detailing in them. A nice mixture of cloth, leather and chain. And this one carrying the severed head of a victim is absolutely beautiful, even down to the um, knot in his beard. Does have a slight punch, mind you. So he's getting a bit fat, apparently. But nonetheless, the command sprue, really nice figures. They just take a bit more time to assemble than you would imagine. If we have a look at our second sprue, this is our warrior sprue. So first off, there are a lot of heads. Um, 17 different head options, I believe. A mix of armoured and unarmoured, including a hat that looks very Russ. And if it's not Russ, then he could almost be uh, anglo Dane. There's the back. You'll notice there's an unusual flat piece to this head. And again, it will only fit with this. And where this happens, you'll see, there we are. So this is H17A to fit head H17. So where you do get components that must go together, they're normally labeled uh, as a secondary part with the same number and then a suffix letter. There are enough arms on here to make either single-handed weapons. There are more double-handed 
and we have our standard spears, although these spears are a little shorter than the hearthguard or command spears, sort of almost more like javelins. A little mixture of head types on it. So there's a uh, almost a boar spear with a cross piece. You get eight bodies in a variety of poses, and where you get things like this, so B2. B2 has a choice of three hands for this offhand, which are up here, so A9, um, A10, which is actually at the side here, because below it, 6, 2, and 1 are actually the shields. The uh, prefix, so SH, will be your shield. A is generally an arm or a hand. B is a body, so on. So it, it, it does become intuitive after a while, but you still need to find his hands are on the opposite side of the sprue in a couple of different places. And in fact, there should be a third hand that I still haven't found yet. And I'm assuming it's somewhere screwing around the sprue. You get uh, shields. Shields come in a variety of sizes. So we have small, medium and large. And then another set of five in three different sizes again. And we also get um, scabbarded swords, spare axes, hand axe, belts, grammar sacks. Again, good detailing throughout. I haven't seen much in the way of pitting. And where they have got pitting, it's hidden on the reverse where it's going to be glued. Seam-wise, there are some seams that are very noticeable and will need trimming down. And in some places, they can be a little bit aggravating to get to. But the worst will always be on the chain mail. Thankfully, a lot of the cases, it's hidden under an armpit. So hopefully between weapons and shields, you won't notice them so much. Because cleaning chain mail is never easy. I have put a couple together just to show them. So here we have a berserker looking fellow rocking two hand axes. He's got a nice um, quilted gameson on. I do like the texturing on there. It should paint up quite easily with a washer or dry brush. And these hands, there are a variety. So I could have used swords. I could have had a sword and shield or different types of axes in there. It's really a case of finding ones that appeal to you. Some will fit better than others. And here is that body with the single hand. Again, shield forward, forming almost a shield wall and striking down at his opponent. So it's a nice set of miniatures. I have to say overall I'm quite impressed with the Vitrix plastics. There are a few details on them that I would um, prefer if they were changed, but I know it's obviously the, the wave of the chainmail is quite large in comparison to how it should be, but if they were just that, it wouldn't carry across on the plastics. I do have to say the fact that it does just come with this laundry list of alphabetic spaghetti that you have to hook through to try and make your miniatures. That's a little bit irritating, especially when there's such a large volume. But once you get into the, the rhythm of it, it won't take you too long. I just recommend dry fitting everything before you apply glue to anything at all. So that is the Dark Age Vikings from Vitrix. Let me know what you think of them below. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.